Hi everybody, I'm Anupi Singla. Welcome to Indian as Apple Pie, the show that shows you that making Indian food at home can be healthy and incredibly easy. Today, we're gonna focus on slow, very slow cooking. As some of you know, I just published my first cookbook, The Indian Slow Cooker, which takes 50 of the most popular Indian dishes like black lentils, chickpeas, and even chicken curry and shows you how to make them in the quintessential American home kitchen tool, the crock pot. Now, Indian and the slow cooker is not a combination that has always been put together, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about the fact that traditional Indian cooking in India, beans and lentils are normally made over a very low flamed and cooked hours upon hours. And it seems like my matchup of Indian food and slow cooker is catching on. The Spice House in Evanston, Illinois, not only sells the freshest, most aromatic spices around, they now also carry my book. I was there recently for a book signing where customers were buzzing about combining Indian cuisine with their slow cookers. I love Indian food. I don't cook it that often. And when I go out to Indian restaurants, it's always pretty high in salt and high in fat, and I have to watch my salt, and I figure the more I cook it myself, the more control I'll have. It seems like it makes it more accessible to people because I have a couple other Indian cookbooks that I'm a, f a fan of. Um, one of them is I think, The Art of Indian Vegetarian Cooking. And those, those recipes, it's an amazing book and I love her recipes, but they're so daunting. And you look at them and it's like three pages long with all these different complicated steps and the slow cooker makes everything much easier and still tastes wonderful. So today I'm going to show you how to make one of my absolute favorite dishes. It's called Rajma. It's kind of like um, red beans and rice or an Indianized version of chili. We use kidney beans and we mix it up with lots of spices um, and eat it basically over rice. It is the essential comfort food for North Indians and very easy to make in your slow cooker. Now, because I use only dried beans when I cook, I prefer not to use the canned varieties because um, one, they're more expensive, and also because canned beans already have the moisture in them, so it's very difficult for them to break down even more when you're cooking. So take those dried beans and know that they will take 11 hours in your slow cooker to cook because they are dried, but that 11 hours is mostly your slow cooker doing the work. You're really only going to have to put in about 15 minutes of prep time before dinner is ready. Normally, I would get everything ready and start prepping it at about 6 or 7 in the morning so that after 11 hours when I get home from work uh, with the kids, dinner is ready. And what you want to do is basically gather your ingredients. I'm going to start with three cups of red kidney beans. Now, again, these beans are dried. You want to clean them out when you get them from the store. Make sure there's no rocks or debris in them. And then you want to wash them thoroughly with water. And once they are washed, you're going to stick them in your slow cooker. It's as easy as that. The next thing you need is one chopped, finely chopped onion. That could be a yellow onion, it could be a red onion. You're going to stick that right in as well. See, this is really easy. I like easy. Easy, healthy, little oil. And in this dish, no oil. We're going to do two chopped tomatoes. I used plum tomatoes for this recipe. And those are coarsely chopped. I'm going to stick those right in. And then you're going to get to your ginger and your garlic. I use about an inch of fresh ginger peeled and three cloves of garlic. Now, in this instance, what I did was chop it, but normally my children don't like to bite into either one. So what I will do is take them and take a little microplane grater right over my cutting board or right over my slow cooker and just grate it right into my dish. So your fresh ingredients are almost done. Now we have to think about adding the chilies. Remember for Indian food, it's green serrano or Thai chilies that work the best. You really want to avoid the jalapeno, which has a thicker skin. You want to also avoid um, habanero chilies, which are used traditionally in the Mexican cuisine. And for the green chilies, I would normally just chop them and put them right in. What you can also do, though, is clean them out. So if you're more sensitive, use gloves when you're doing this. 
clean the chili out from the inside and take out all of the seeds and anything else that's inside the chili and put the outside green part inside your dish so you get the flavor minus the heat. But again, for me, I don't bother with any of that stuff if I'm not cooking for my kids. I will just chop it right up. We've got two chilies here. You can use two to four to six. My dad eats and makes rajma with eight chilies. So you can imagine how spicy that actually is. You're gonna stick it right in there. And then what we want to do is we want to head over to our spice container, our masala dubba. We're going to add the next layer of flavor and that's going to be all the spicing. We'll start with a tablespoon from our spice box of cumin seed. Put that right in. Then we want to do two tablespoons of white salt, just regular table salt. So one, let's see if we can get it in there. There we go, about two tablespoons of that. We'll go to the garam masala and do one tablespoon of that. We will do, I would do, one tablespoon to two tablespoons of red chili powder, but you're gonna have to see what your spice levels are for you and your family. Let's do one tablespoon of that. And then we'll do the chimeric, this nice, beautiful, bright yellow spice that adds a ton of flavor. So once the dry spices are in, you wanna go for the cinnamon stick. If you don't have a stick, use cinnamon powder, about a teaspoon. You're going to put that right in for flavor. And then go to your cloves. I love these cloves. They are used in Indian chai. And they can also be used if you have a toothache. You can stick it right in the area where your tooth is hurting. And it will help your toothache get better. But those cloves are going to go right into my dish as well. Three to four. And that's it, folks. Less than 15 minutes, I'm thinking, for prep time. Now we've got the water. You want to put in eight to nine cups of water. This is eight cups. We're going to pour that right in. All done. It already smells really good. You've got to trust me on this one. We're going to grab our lid. Put that down right over your slow cooker. Turn your slow cooker to high. That's important for beans because they've got that thicker, outer layer. You're going to need that high setting to really break them down. And dinner will be ready 11 hours later in no time.